We were staying at the Fountain Blue Hotel, and I'm right there at the front desk paying my incidents. And uh, I looked to my left, and the bus was there, so I thought I had plenty of, a time, plenty of time. But it was, I may have had one or two people in front of me. But anyway, I'm there again. By the time I get there, I get ready to pay my cash and everything. But anyway, I noticed the bus pull off. And when the bus pulled off, there were several coaches. Now, I don't know if Coach Grisco was one of them, but I do know Coach Crane, Paul Crane, saw me. And you know I wasn't, they, we weren't going to open that door with Coach Bryant there on that bus. It's just, see, I'm being late. So what I did, I started running. He would run up beside the buses as they slowed down slightly for an intersection. He was gaining on that third bus. We were all pulling for him. And uh, then the light, you know, the uh, police would stop the traffic. The buses would go on through. We'd kind of pull away from Woodrow. Here I am running in that crimson blazer, you know, in my slacks and everything. And uh, hey, it was about maybe, I don't know, I, it seemed like it was uh, about three or four blocks, but it might have been a half a mile or so. I don't know. Then the next intersection, they'd slow down a little bit and Woodrow would run back up beside the bus. <laughs> and then we'd pull away from him. I just, I don't, all I do knew is that I was not going to be late. And when that bus got there, that I was going to be there when they got off the bus at the, uh, at the Sugar Bowl. And uh, I wasn't tired. I was more scared than anything. And, of course, he was warmed up when we got there. He didn't have to wait for the on-the-field warm-ups. I often wondered if Coach Brian knew. I think he knew, but he never did say anything to me about it.